Hello everybody, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. If you have not been here before, my name is Erin. I already said that. I'm currently 32 weeks pregnant. Baby girl is coming in July. I have a little summer baby coming and I make videos here on my channel all about prepping for baby, pregnancy videos. There are gonna be lots of baby videos once a little baby girl's born. So just motherhood, lifestyle, a lot of times with an eco-friendly twist. So if you are interested in content like that, please consider clicking the subscribe button and uh, turning on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I'm still uh, in my pajamas actually, but I'm gonna show you a bump shot. Here's baby girl. The bump is uh, definitely getting bigger. Holy smokies. These little sleep dresses are awesome. I got them from Pact. Once baby's born, it'll be really easy to breastfeed. And honestly, I think I'm gonna wear this to the hospital. I think this might be my hospital outfit if they let me wear my own clothes or, you know, I'm not really sure how that works yet. But anyways, on to today's actual video topic. Today, we are talking about baby mooning. More specifically, baby mooning in your third trimester. And more, more specifically, having an active baby moon in your third trimester. So I'm talking uh, baby moons that involve hiking, heat, uh, yeah, pretty much hiking in the heat. Um, so we actually baby mooned at Disney World, Orlando, Florida. We live in Florida. It uh, wasn't too long of a drive to get there. We've been to Disney many times before, so this wasn't anything too crazy for us. So we have like our theme park, bag, what we like to pack pretty much down, but there were definitely some things that we really did differently this time around because I am uh, 32 weeks pregnant. When we were traveling to Disney, I was 30 weeks pregnant, so a couple weeks ago, but still, it was, uh, it was a substantial belly. So I'm not necessarily going to be talking about things that only apply to baby mooning at Disney World. You know, maybe you're going to Hawaii and you wanna do some hikes or, you know, you're traveling abroad and you wanna, you know, you're gonna be doing things all day long and you wanna make sure you're comfortable, you wanna make sure you stay cool, um, you wanna make sure you're able to, you know, do things each day and maybe not necessarily take as many downtime days. Even though um, if you are baby mooning, just know that that is something that you're going to have to uh, go with the flow and really just listen to your body and what your body needs. So if you're planning a jam packed schedule day after day after day after day, um, you know, our baby moon was only two days long. We just took like a weekend. But if you're baby mooning for like a week, two weeks long, just know you are going to need to take long breaks. I'm talking about like whole day breaks, okay? <laughs> but yeah, the main focus is really gonna be about what to pack clothes-wise, what other things you can do, some precautions you can take to make sure that you are comfortable in your third trimester on your active baby moon. If you see me looking at my phone, I have my notes here, so that's what I'm looking at. Before we get started, just some general travel tips before you embark on your baby moon in your third trimester, or if you're just traveling in your third trimester. Make sure you talk to your doctor first, um, because it is later in your pregnancy, you wanna make sure it is okay for you to travel, especially if you're flying on an airplane. This is why we opted to not do anything crazy like that. Another thing is to stay close to home, I would suggest. If you, God forbid, go into preterm labor or something, you want to be close to home and it's just gonna be a lot less stressful. If you are baby mooning in your third trimester, I wouldn't recommend going like out of the country but that's just me personally and talk to your care provider about what would be best for you so I have these broken up into some different categories first some things I want to make sure you do not forget to do is do not forget that camera or your phone make sure you are taking pictures grab a souvenir you're going to want to remember this baby moon that is why even though I did not get a ton of clips of Austin and myself on our baby moon I did get some clips that I did put together in sort of a haphazard video that you can check out on my channel. I will link it up here if you want to see our baby moon at Disney World. And just letting you guys know, I will link everything that I'm talking about in the description box as well. Now, the next general thing before we jump into the little uh, each category topics is make sure you are bringing a little day bag uh, to carry essentials with you wherever you're going. So if you're going to, for example, Disney World or a theme park, something like that, you're gonna wanna bring a little day bag with you, something that is comfortable. Whenever we go to theme parks or have little day hikes, I always bring my little sling bag. It's like a cross body bag. So you can carry it in the front like this or carry it in the back. And then when you need it really quickly, you just go like this. I love this thing. It's from Everlane. If you're wondering what all this stuff is, this is my bag of goodies that I'm about to talk about. 
And my husband always brings a little bit of a bigger bag to put a few more things in. So now let's jump into what you actually want to bring. So first thing I want to talk about is beating the heat. Now, as a third trimester pregnant person, you're probably feeling kind of sweaty, uh, a little sticky all the time. At least that's how I feel. I know I have to keep our house like literally eight degrees colder than we usually keep it. My body is just running so much hotter, it feels like. And if you are baby mooning somewhere out in the heat, in the summer, in the sun, like we did, you are going to want to take some precautions. First thing I want to talk about is a neck fan. You might think, holy moly, I never thought I would be one of those tourists with like a neck fan and that's what I was thinking too. And I've actually never seen a neck fan like this or if I have it didn't really compute in my brain. I've only seen the ones where people walk around with like, it's like a spray bottle and it's got a fan on it but you have to like actually hold it and use it. This, you can move it and it literally just sits around your neck and it has so many different speeds. Four, five, it goes up so much. Oh God, it goes up more. Hmm. And this would last me literally like the whole day at the parks. So we actually have two. We have one for me and one for my husband and he was using it too. It was amazing. I saw some people, they were looking at our fans. I had someone ask me about it. They're awesome. I'm gonna link it down below. We just got ours off of Amazon. And what's great about these two is if you're like sitting down at like a picnic table and you're having a snack, you can move this to be a little table fan. So. It's just like sitting on the table like this now, and then it can still be blowing air on you. So portable fan, neck fan, 10 out of 10. Highly recommend you bring one of those. Something else to consider in that realm is like a neck cooling towel. When you add water to these, they get like really cool. I don't actually know how they work. Even when I'm like holding this, it feels cold. We didn't really use these, but these actually work really well. If you're in a situation where you're like sweating and you really just want some cold towel on you, these are great. Of course, you're also gonna wanna make sure you have lots of water with you, and more specifically, ice water in an insulated bottle, preferably. So this is, you can hear my ice sloshing around. I always have to have ice in my water now in pregnancy, and this was true when we were baby mooning out in the heat in my third trimester. So when we were at Disney, we were actually staying in a little Airbnb, and they did not have ice. They didn't have an ice maker. They didn't provide like ice cube trays. And normally I wouldn't care, but that was like one of my gripes with this Airbnb as I just wanted some ice. So if ice water is something that is really important to you and you are staying somewhere, make sure they either have an ice maker or you're going to want to grab some water bottles that you can stick in the fridge or the freezer or something. Because honestly, if you're out in the heat, if you put some ice water in like in my hydro flask, they'll, it'll stay ice water all day long. And at the theme parks, if you are baby mooning somewhere like Disney World, you can go up to the counter and just ask for ice water and they will give it to you in a cup and you just refill your water bottle. So we were doing that constantly. We were constantly asking for ice, constantly asking for water, and just constantly drinking ice water, and that really helped us out. Now, related to beating the heat, if it is super sunny and bright, you are going to want to make sure you have your sunglasses, and you're going to want to make sure you have a hat or like a sun visor. I would recommend getting a visor, so something that your head is, you know, free to breathe. I just find personally when I'm wearing a baseball hat, it just traps in all that heat on your head. This little guy is something I found on Amazon. So incredibly great. You're probably like, what the heck is this? So it has this elastic thing. So you can take this off and you unroll it. Austin calls this my handmaid's tail hat. He says it looks like those hats they wear in a handmaid's tail. And you Velcro it just on the back like that. So now it's like a little sun hat visor. So these are great for if you're doing like a beachy honeymoon anywhere, honestly, it's great because it's like a sun hat. Mine's like as small as it can go. I kind of have a small head. And then you just roll it up. So whenever we were about to go on a ride or something, or when I bring this to the beach, I just like roll it up and throw it in my beach bag. And then you take this and you just pop that on. This is amazing. I'm so glad I found this. You are also gonna wanna make sure you pack sunscreen. You're gonna wanna make sure you bring sunscreen in your day bag. My favorite sunscreen that I have been trying lately is Native actually makes a sunscreen now. You might've heard of them for aluminum free, you know, really clean deodorant. And I actually really love their deodorant too. So I wanted to try their sunscreen. So I got their SPF 30 in uh, their face sunscreen. So that's what this is right here. 
And I also got some of their body sunscreen and uh, I got them both um, unscented. I think you can get them with like a scent too, but I went ahead and just got, got unscented. And uh, I love this stuff. It's a mineral sunscreen, but I feel like with other mineral sunscreens, it's like literally impossible to spread, like impossible, you know, when you have that uh, zinc oxide sunscreen, cause that's what this is. Cause you know, they say that's a, a lot safer cause it's not being absorbed into your skin. It's just sitting on top of your skin, especially if you're pregnant. So um, this, however, I really found a lot easier to spread almost more like a normal sunscreen, not as liquidy, but it really felt a lot easier to manage. So I'm definitely gonna be getting more of this when this runs out. And the face sunscreen comes with a little squirt tube. Love it. And if you're baby mooning with your partner, make sure they sunscreen up too, because nobody likes to have a sunburn day two of their baby moon. Okay, now let's talk about clothes. First off, I just wanna say, when you are going out and about in the sun, wear light colors. Now I know sometimes it's like you wanna wear darker colors in case you know you get scuffed up or spill something on you. Um, it's a lot harder to see it in like a dark color, I feel like, but if it's sunny outside and you're wearing like a black tank top, like I was when we went to Epcot, the sun, your clothes will get so much hotter and I could feel it. Like I was telling Austin, I was like, feel my shirt. It feels like it's on fire. So wear lighter colors if you can. Just get yourself some nice, loose, comfy tank tops that'll work for you in maternity and beyond this and i also have one in like a navy blue color i got them off of thread up which if you don't know is just like a big online thrift store um but i think they're from pink blush i don't know if they're strictly a maternity brand i'm not really sure but these are great they just have like a little knot right here and they're nice and stretchy so they are gonna work for me while i am pregnant and after so i wore this one the first day when we were at magic kingdom and the color was really nice and felt nice and light and wasn't absorbing all of that light and heat Something I do want to say, however, though, is I spilt orange Dole Whip all over this shirt near the end of the day. Luckily, it was near the end of the day, but luckily I had brought an extra tank top with me. So another tip is to make sure you pack some extra clothes with you. I always, I always pack extra clothes when we go to theme parks because you just don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to get soaking wet. You don't know if you're going to spill slushy all over you. No one wants to sit in sticky slushy. This has all happened to me. But what we do is we just get like a packing cube, not this one, this one's too big, but we will grab literally just like a smaller packing cube. And in this, cause you can really compress these down, I will get a tank top in here, extra pair of shorts, extra bra, extra underwear, and Austin will throw an extra like t-shirt in here too. And I will also throw a light sweatshirt in Austin's park bag also. So his little day bag. Because you know, when you're pregnant, your temperatures are fluctuating. You don't have a lot of balance. Your belly's sticking out. So you're spilling all the food on there. You want extra clothes, okay? No one wants pictures with Dole Whip running down your shirt. Now I also recommend comfy shorts or leggings or you know some like maternity bike shorts or something like that. I wore these. I'm about to actually go on to Mate the Label. Um, that's what the brand is, Mate, Mate the Label. I feel like I talk about them in all of my videos, but these shorts I've pretty much been living in in my pregnancy. So I just have these and then ones in like purple and they are so stinking comfy. They're just like a terry cotton, is that what it's called? Terry? cloth, terry, cotton. They're just super, super comfortable. I wore these my first day and my other pair the second day. But I recommend something like that or like spandexy, you know, leggings or biker shorts. Why do I say biker shorts? Bike shorts. I recommend those over something like maternity jean shorts or something like that. I personally don't have any maternity jean shorts, but I feel like it just wouldn't be as comfortable. I know for me, even when I'm not pregnant, I don't recommend wearing <laughs> jean shorts when I'm out hiking or at a theme park because you sweat and everything kind of just like rubs in between your legs and then it hurts. Uh, so don't really recommend jeans. Now, if you've watched any of my pregnancy update or trimester and review videos, you've heard me talk about these also, and they are period panties. I hate that word, panties. Underwear, undies, whatever. These are from NYX, they are awesome. I just recently bought a bunch more of them, but it's great. Basically wearing underwear with a built-in panty liner, but they're great. I don't know about you, but I'm just leaking all over the place and uh, you know, you're sweating and you don't, it's just, this wicks it away and they're perfect. They're awesome. You're also gonna want some really comfortable 
bras or sports bras. And this I recently also got from NYX. Oh my goodness. This is the most comfortable bra, sports bra, whatever I have ever worn in my life. Now I have their other like, um, I think it's called their like wing contour bra. I'm actually wearing it right now. A lot of people are like, oh, I like don't feel like I'm wearing anything or I don't mind wearing it. I totally feel myself wearing this and maybe that's because I'm usually not a like bra person at all. This bra from NYX is amazing. I'm gonna have to find out exactly what bra it is. So it's one of their sport bras. It's just their Lux Lift pullover bra. I'm gonna get more of these. This is the only one I bought, but it's amazing. It, it feels so comfortable. Like I swear to you, I felt like I was not wearing a bra all day long. It just feels like the top of like a tank top and it has these pads in here and you can take these out if you want, but this was so incredibly comfortable. So make sure you're wearing some comfortable uh, sports bras. You know, if you're being active, I recommend a sports bra over a normal bra, um, but just whatever is comfortable and works for you. Now, just because you're having an active baby moon doesn't mean you might not be having uh, some date nights, you know, going out to some nicer restaurants or something at night. So make sure you bring some nice maternity dresses. So these little dresses, I have this one and a brown one. They are from Dwell and Slumber. They are so great because you can literally wear them as like a nightgown or you can wear them out like as a nice dress. So Austin and I went out to a nicer restaurant on Friday night. So like the first night of our baby moon, we first got there and uh, I wore this and it's so comfortable. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. So if you like put your hair up and back and wear some earrings and like a necklace with this, it, you look really chic. But I also wear these to bed sometimes. So they are just so great. Don't forget to bring yourself some comfy PJs. Also your sleep is so important on your baby moon getting rejuvenated and making sure you're comfortable while you're sleeping is so important and that's actually another category we are going to jump into in a little bit. Now also with clothes you are going to want to really think about your shoes and about your feet because if you are walking around all day long for multiple days in a row you are really going to want to make sure you are wearing the proper shoes. So I highly recommend wearing open-toed shoes that have a lot of sole support and are also really squishy. So I actually have my Tiva sandals. I believe they are, um, I'll put the name of the actual like whole name. It's like their Tiva hurricane something, something. I don't know. It's like a trekking, like a hiking sandal. I love these things. I had some zero shoes for a while and they don't have sole support because they're literally a barefoot sandal, which they're great as a camp shoe. Like if you're walking around on grass and things that have some, you know, cushion, but if you're walking around on concrete or something like a theme park, you're gonna want something with some sole support and with some squish. So these Tevas were awesome. And I also recommend wearing something that is open toed or has some, you know, space. It's because your feet, they're gonna swell most likely. So if you're wearing tennis shoes, sometimes that can feel a little uh, intense and a little squishy. I did not wear tennis shoes at all or sneakers at all on my baby moon. I just went straight for these and I really enjoyed that. Also, if it's hot, I feel like it lets your feet breathe. And um, you know, if you're going to theme parks just in general, I always opt for a sandal because these are waterproof. So if it rains, you're not sitting in like soaking wet socks and uh, yeah, these are just perfect. Something that I did not use and I don't actually have are compression socks. So a lot of people recommend getting some compression socks and wearing those because as a pregnant person, you are more prone to getting like blood clots and things like that. So if you are someone who that, you know, might affect more, maybe consider wearing some compression socks. Something else I wanna mention with shoes, do not buy a new pair of shoes and then wear them for the first time on your baby moon. I bought these a probably like a month before we went and when we were doing our walks around the neighborhood, I was wearing these. You know, you don't want them rubbing you in the wrong way on your baby moon and then you have like a blister. That is no fun. But just to be safe, sometimes it's nice to pack some uh, moleskin um, you know, that you can put on your shoes so that it's not rubbing you in the wrong way or even just pack some like band-aids or something. Also, it's good to just keep band-aids with you. I always keep a little emergency kit in my bag, no matter where I go. It goes in my purse, it goes everywhere. It's got band-aids, it's got Tums, it's got Tic Tacs, it's got chapstick, a uh, contact solution. It is my emergency little pouch. I just put it in like a little pouch like this. It goes with me everywhere. 
everywhere. Okay, so we talked about our feet. Let's talk about some more body aches that can happen and how we can prevent those. So since you're gonna be on your feet probably for a good part of the day on your active third trimester baby moon, grab yourself a belly band or a belly belt. And I really like this baby. I wore this most of the day on the first day and then not so much on the second day. It really just, sometimes I feel like, and I don't know if it's because of like how she's hanging out in there, but sometimes I feel like as I walk, I can like feel my belly like bouncing and I need to like sort of hold it in and it feels really good to wear this. And sometimes it feels good to not wear this. So it's good to have this as an option. You know, it rolls up pretty small, just stick it in your bag. Um, and this can help alleviate a lot of lower back pain that you're feeling also. Now I wore this and I still had a ton of lower back pain, but you know, it can help, so. So with your belly band, if it's feeling kind of uncomfortable against your skin, you can get some of these and it's literally just like, like a piece of fabric. I wore these over like my jeans when I was first starting to get uh, a little bit of a belly and it was still cold outside and I was wearing jeans. I could like wear them unbuttoned and unzipped and I would just put these like over them. They would hold my pants on but since then I've been using these sometimes if this gets a little itchy which normally I just wear it like against myself and it's not bad at all but sometimes you can wear this and then wear the band but it does to me feel a little bit hotter if I have this and the band and my shirt so it's really just up to you now as much as you can try and prevent those aches and pains you know if you're on your feet all day long and you're in your third trimester you're just carrying all that extra weight in a weird place and you're gonna probably get back aches you're gonna get some feet aches so my biggest recommendation if you can at your accommodation if they have a bathtub take a warm bath if you can just try and wind down at the end of the day bring some body lotion or some massage oil we just used my like pregnancy safe like belly moisturizer that I've been using I brought some of that with us and Austin bless his soul he rubbed my feet he rubbed my lower back each night. And honestly, I think this helped my body recover overnight and helped me be able to be on my feet again the next day because yeah, you can wear cushiony shoes and wear the right shoes, but like, if you're on your feet all day, like they're gonna hurt and your back's gonna hurt. At least they did for me. So see if your partner or someone can give you a little back rub. If they're not into that, you know, maybe bring like a tennis ball or something so you can roll out your feet or bring like a heating pad or uh, some ice. Actually icing my back felt really nice. So we brought our ice pack with us and just give yourself a little bit of love and self-care when you get back to your hotel or BNB or whatever, when you are baby mooning. Okay, this one I have under body aches and it's kind of random, but in your day bag, if you're prone to having dry eyes or you have contacts, I know for me being pregnant, my eyes have been so dry. So I always make sure I have some eye drops with me or some contact solution. And um, I just thought that was something important to add in there. There's nothing worse than being out and about and just being like, I can't even open my eyes, this sucks. Now, something else that is so important is your sleep, like I was talking about before. Making sure you have enough energy the next day to keep trucking along. So my tips for this is if you can, bring your pregnancy pillow with you. We were luckily just driving, so I brought my pregnancy pillow with me. Um, and I brought my normal pillow, so I made sure I was having a really nice sleep the whole time we were there. If your partner snores, make sure you bring those earplugs. I always bring earplugs with me. And sometimes if you're just staying somewhere new, you don't really know how thin the walls are. If you're staying at a hotel and someone's screaming next door, I always sleep with earplugs in when we travel, just so I can make sure I get that uninterrupted sleep. Make sure you got your Tums or your antacid by your bed if you are experiencing crazy heartburn at night like I am. And also, if you can, your schedule allows just sleep in get as much sleep as you can normally we are the type of theme park people or when we travel we like to get up early we like to get a good start on the day really push it and get as much in it during the day as we can but this was our baby moon you really just need to chillax sleep in if you can we were planning on rope dropping magic kingdom on that first you know whole day of our baby moon and austin right before we went to bed he was like you know maybe we should just sleep in, get there when we get there and uh, see what happens. And honestly, I'm so glad I listened to him and I'm so glad we did that because it was so much nicer just to go with the flow. Just make sure your body's getting all the sleep it needs because you're basically running a marathon inside your body on top of this, you know, marathon you're, you're hiking during the day. So 
give your body that time to rest. Now, something else to help keep your energy up and just to make sure you can make it through the day is to take breaks often. Maybe this is really obvious, but you really need to be more conscious about it. A lot of times you're just go, go, going, but if you can, plan out your breaks. So for example, for us, we would literally ride a ride, go to the bathroom, and then go find food and just like sit. Even if it took us like five minutes to eat something, we would make sure we were sitting for a good, you know, 15, 20 minutes, just sitting, chilling, hopefully in air conditioning. Hi, baby girl. She's moving around. So just find AC if you can, really take those breaks, plan them out. Um, a lot of times it's better to plan those out ahead of time. That way you can uh, sort of go with the flow the day of, if that makes sense. So I know for me, like my days, I like to have sort of a loose plan and then go with the flow as the day goes on. But when you plan out that day, don't just plan what you're gonna do, plan in the breaks. And if you're baby mooning for, you know, longer than just a couple of days, plan in those days where you're literally just sitting by the pool or um, taking a day where you're not even leaving the hotel room you may feel like you're like wasting your time or something but you're really not because if you have that time to recover and to just relax you're gonna be able to have such a much more enjoyable time after when you're actually doing things so something else with taking those breaks a lot of times it's good to just pack like a little I don't know what you call this like a little picnic blanket it's this is really thin it's just like a cloth thing this has been traveling with me everywhere but just put a little blanket or cloth like sarong in your bag and that way if there is no seating available you can just sit on the floor if you're in the woods sit on the floor you don't have to get your booty all dirty these are just great if you need some shade and they can be used for pretty much anything and everything you spill something all over yourself you know everything and also with that with taking your breaks often you're going to want to make sure you are eating often so when you plan in those breaks make sure you are also planning in getting food. So that was really our main focus on our Disney World baby moon trip is we wanted to just like try new foods that we've never tried at the parks and uh, really just eat everything we could at Epcot. And it worked out really well because when we were eating, we would sit and we would try and find some air conditioning and uh, that really helped us along on our day. And if you're somewhere or you're hiking and you aren't at a place where you can like stop and get food, make sure you are bringing plenty of food and snacks with you. And just for a last category, if COVID is still going on when you are watching this video, make sure you bring your mask and make sure you bring extra masks and maybe some different kinds of masks because sometimes you're wearing a mask all day, it can rub on your ears a certain way and maybe you wanna wear a different kind so get yourself some adjustable ones get yourself some that tie in the back maybe so they're not touching your ears i have to wear like this brand i think they're athletica athleta what brand what am i saying i think it's like gaps brand athleta these masks i love them they're honestly the most breathable ones that i have found um instead of just like a heavy like cotton one so try and find a mask that works with you and these have little adjustable straps so love these and make sure you're bringing hand sanitizer along with you and this is kind of true even if it's not covid in our little day bags we always have our little things of hand sanitizer with us most places are pretty good at providing these things but if you're out and about and you just want to make sure you stay uh stay nice and clean and just remember when you are packing all this stuff for your baby moon you are packing little bits of all of this stuff in your day bag so like your tums you're gonna want to bring some with you um your sunscreen you're gonna bring some with you uh, any medication you have um, don't forget to bring all these in your day bag so I actually just have these little containers these are awesome they're from I think the brand is called cadence they're little like toiletry carriers these are just three I actually have a bunch of them so you can get ones with symbols you can get ones that say like moisturizer or facial cream whatever you can actually replace these little heads too and they are magnetic they like stick together. They're literally like indestructible. They do not leak. And I love that on the inside, they are, there's like no right angles. So you can get like all the product out. Anyways, I'm like obsessed with these and I have like 12 of them and they are my new go-to travel containers because I felt like we were always buying travel containers and then they would leak and like break and like you never get all the stuff out and then I would just throw them away and get new ones. So wasteful. So I'm so excited about these and I used them on our baby moon and they were awesome. So I would always have one that had like my medication and then I'd have one that had sunscreen. Tums, you fill them with literally anything. So just make sure 
sure you are bringing those essentials with you in your day bag. Now the last thing, just if you are having any other symptoms that you need to deal with and you're taking like medication or something like that, just make sure you do not forget those on your baby moon and don't forget to bring them with you along on your little day trips. <sighs> okay, so that is about it. We talked about a lot of things. Hopefully you found this helpful if you are baby mooning or traveling or doing anything active in your third trimester. I want you to stay comfy and have such a good time and make some wonderful memories. So I hope this was able to help you out at least a little bit with that. So with that said, I have to go to the bathroom because it has been at least 20 minutes since I went to the bathroom. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video. Did I have this on me? Like literally the whole video? That's annoying. All in this, I stand alone. Show me.